and welcome to Thrive, man. So excited about, really excited about this. This is one of my favorite things to do because yes. I know I know the degree of transformation it is able to bring in the lives of people. One, I know thriving is possible. Mm. It is. It is possible. It is possible. Um, I know what it's like to live life sinking. Mm. I know what it's like to live life surviving. Mm. I don't know what is the what is to live like life thriving. John 10, 10 life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, have it more abundantly, have it to the full. A thriving life. Jesus came not just to seek and save lost lives. He also came, in addition to that, mm -hmm. to save the life that God was lost. Mm -hmm. That that the life that we lost, mm -hmm. right? Um, the life that God intends for us to live. The, life the king's way and uh, that's what thrive is about mm -hmm. and we gather each wednesday for the purpose of opening up and exploring god's word which is the blueprint to a thriving life and uh one of the things that we have learned though is that if a person is really going to experience god's best they need principles mm -hmm. and we're about to teach you that yeah but we also need power, power. we need presence yeah. that god won't even let us make watch this he, he won't even let us make an idol out of his principles. Mm. Mm. He, says, he says, even to carry out his principles, we'll need his power. Mm. The principle is love, his, love your enemies. <laughs> Try to do that without God and see how far you get. And the presence. You need the power and the presence. <laughs> so that's why, that's why we begin our time together with prayer. And... Um, and we have prayer requests that actually come in each week, and we just pick a few mm -hmm. to highlight. We we, we want to pray over all of them, but we just pick a few to highlight. And so today we are highlighting the prayer request of Jessica Altia, who is believing God for favorable admission. And we know God's the God of mm -hmm. favor. And yeah. so as you try to get into the right grad school, we just believe God's going to open the right door. He opens doors no man can shut uh -huh. and closes doors no man can open. I ended up at the right place because the wrong place rejected Come on. me. Yeah. Or Roberts, or Roberts yeah. rejected me. Yeah. And Preston accepted mm -hmm. me. Rejection was direction. Ah. Ah. He's done already. He's done already. <laughs> so, so I'm praying for you, Jessica. Uh, we're praying for D. Gray for employment, not just any type of employment, but we're That's praying right. for favorable employment. That's right. And uh, Kelly Lewis, we're praying for wisdom and guidance. That's a, a prayer request for wisdom Mm -hmm. Watch, this is weird. This is this is about a, a double entendre. Praying for wisdom is the wise, one of the wisest <laughs> things you can do. He's <laughs> yeah. yeah. praying for wisdom. So we're going to be believing God for you with that. Praying for Tara Hollins, who's praying, who's interceding and standing in the gap for her aunt for physical healing. Mm -hmm. We're praying for Stephen Folks, who's believing for financial provision. And we know God makes provision for his people. And Annette, we, Annette Lewis, we got your prayer request. It's private in nature, but we do want you to know that we did receive it mm -hmm. and that we are praying for you. And so even those of you that might be watching live, I want you to put those prayer requests now, even in the chat. The Bible says, make our requests known unto him. This is the one of the ways you can do this. And, and also they're putting an email address on the screen where you can send prayer requests to us and our dear Daniels Ministries team would love to receive those requests and pray over them. So Father, we just thank you thank now you, for God. all that you are, all that you are, that you are all that you say you yes, are. Lord. You, you are not a man. You don't lie. Mm. You're not the son of a man. You don't change your mind. If you said it, if Come you spoke on. it, yes, you will bring it to pass. Yes. And you told us that if we called upon you, you hey. would answer us and show us great and mighty things that we know not of. So we call on you tonight for each and every request that has been lifted up to you today for favorable admission, for favorable employment, for wisdom, for healing, yes, for guidance, Thank for you, direction. Father. And Father, I pray that you would look on every prayer request, even now this being placed in the chat. Yes. I thank you. Thank you, God. That you do more than answer our prayers. <laughs> you exceed our expectations, expectations with your answer. Yes. You don't just answer it. You do exceedingly Exceeding. and abundantly above all we ask. <laughs> I thank you for thank that. Thank you, Father. That we're going to see the manifestation of that. We pray for this. We pray in faith. 
And we ask it in the name of the one who answers every prayer according to his will. And that name is Jesus. And we say together, amen. Amen. And amen. amen. And amen. Yes, well, man, praise God for that, man. Prayers, listen. What is it? I can't remember who said it. Um, I, I, sometimes I read so much. <laughs> I forget who, who said what. But somebody said, I think it was Ian Bow. Mm -hmm. Somebody said that if we knew mm -hmm. what prayer really does, yeah. you would never have to yeah. encourage anybody yeah. to pray. Yeah. That like, sounds like Ian Bow. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah it might be Bow. So, man, so grateful, excited about tonight, Doc. Everything good in Listen, your world, in your life? Let me testify to the Thrive Saints. Okay. They've Listen, been on you. They've been Listen, on you, Reverend. I've been delivered from Coke. I've been delivered from Dr. Pepper. And I've been delivered from Mount Duke. What about Sprite? I, I, Sprite too. All <laughs> sorts, man. I bless you. Little Debbie's, I've been delivered from Big Debbie. Little Debbie, man, I'm doing good. I'm still in seek season. I'm looking for something. Yeah. I'm yeah, looking yeah, for yeah. something. Somebody man. put in the chat, you're proud of it. You're yeah, proud of it. Y'all proud of it. Come on, let's encourage her. Let's encourage Listen, man, man I've been, I've been, I've been on the grind, man. I'm, go, I'm going good. back to I had to, I had to have a little, I had to have a little. Yeah, he pulled me in. I had to, I pulled him in. I had to pull him in, guys. I pulled him in. He pulled me into the principal's office. But that's the test of real friendship. It is, though. It is. Come on. The Bible says, the Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like a friend love you enough to say, all hey, right, fam. Man, you got to come on in. Come, come on. Let's let's you tighten wild, up. You wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. But I, I appreciate it. I, nah. Man, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate for pulling me in. And uh, and you, you said this, that um, I forgot what you said. You said comprehension is adjustment. Mm -hmm. Like when mm -hmm. you really comprehend. You adjust. You start making yeah, adjustments, yeah, yeah. Yep. man. And so. Comprehension isn't just agreement. Yeah. It's adjustments. It's adjustments. Yeah, it's like, you know how you, you you talk to somebody. Right. Then they're shaking their head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But you didn't do anything after yeah. that. Like, I know you comprehended when you made the adjustments. Listen, no fast food, man. Um, last, um, maybe a couple of days ago, my first time, and I just ate McDonald's fries. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't get the bourbon. Hey, it's something I just on get, the fries. I did something on the fries, it's man. Fries. You know, so one man, of the we're, nurses. We're, we're, we're grateful for you. <laughs> no, for real. We're grateful that you're doing good, yeah, man. man. And, hey, it's about to get better. It's about to get better. And so it's, it's thriving. You're thriving. Yes, man. sir. Thriving. Yes, sir. So speaking of thriving, we want to jump into this lesson tonight. This is uh, this is really part three of Principles for Progress, right? <laughs> but I want to call it something different because I really got, uh, as I was, as I've been thinking through this idea of this last principle, mm -hmm. um, I feel like we got to lean into this a little bit differently okay. than the other two. And so we believe the way that you that you cannot thrive without the the blueprint to thriving. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the Bible. Right. It is the blueprint to God's best. Mm -hmm. And um, we're exploring on Thrive different books of the Bible, understanding those books, then extracting lessons from those books to apply to our life. And so Hebrews is all about better. Mm -hmm. So this series is, is about to get better. So the series is about, it's about to get better. So we're in the book of Hebrews. We're in chapter 10 tonight. Mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're talk from this subject. Don't stop until you get enough. Come on. <laughs> don't, stop don't stop until you get enough. You know, here's one of the, I want to, I want to lean into the introduction, Pastor, with this axiom. Mm -hmm. And it's it's simple, mm -hmm. but to me, it's significant. Mm -hmm. And watch this. This this is I, I really want you to wrap your head around this. Um, that better isn't just a possibility. Mm. Better is a promise. My God, mm. that's good, Pastor. It's simple. It's simple, but it's significant. It's profound. Somebody put in the chat. It's a promise. It's a promise. Better isn't just a possibility. It's a promise. It's a promise. Mm. He promises better. Uh. Now, our definitions of better mm -hmm. might be different. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm like, you, you know, uh, um, because sometimes you're in between better. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. But he, what we gotta wrap our head around is that better is more than a possibility, man. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. And the promises of God are yea and amen. That's it. Now, God. That's it. God is not slack concerning his promise. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so that's right. Not a possibility. That's good. It's a promise. I love it. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And and 
And his promises, everybody catch this now, mm -hmm. are accessed by faith. Mm. <laughs> Got me? Better is a promise. Mm -hmm. And his promises are accessed by faith. God said, I promise you life is better with me mm -hmm. than without me. Mm -hmm. Come on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, I promise life is better my way yeah. than another way. Now, this is what often happens, Pastor. People go through seasons and situations where when you watch this, when you increase your allegiance to God, you now experience attacks from the enemy. Yes. And so that's what causes some people to operate under the illusion that my life was better before God. Yeah. Not realize that that attack mm -hmm. was coming either way. It's, it's coming either way. Did yeah. you, I want y'all to, I, was, Come on. I, I want people to hear what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like that attack was coming and God in his grace mm -hmm. pursued you, wooed you, mm -hmm. reeled you into intimacy with him. Mm -hmm. And it was proactive, not reactive. Because if you are barely staying together mm -hmm. with God, <laughs> what would have happened if you would have gone through this same thing without God? So we need to reframe mm -hmm. these statements that when I got my life together spiritually, that's when everything else fell apart. Because we're making the assumption mm -hmm. that it wasn't going to fall oh. apart. And God in his providence, yes. pro before, video You'll to see, see. Yep. God in his ability to see before oh. knows if they hit this season of struggle mm. without being anchored spiritually, they're going to suffer unnecessarily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intensify my pursuit, yeah. woo them and reel them in with what John Wesley calls, now come on, you grew up mm -hmm. Methodist, yeah. prevenient the, grace. Prevenient grace, the grace that goes before. <laughs> the grace that goes before, prevenient grace. Grace, watch this, watch this now. This is not what it means, but it is a wordplay, uh -huh. right? You heard a convenient. Uh-huh. Con meaning with. Uh-huh. We want to talk about prevenient. Pre uh-huh. Meaning before. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> the grace. It's grace you get before you with him. You, you didn't even know what grace was, <laughs> and you were walking in it. Uh -huh. It wasn't <laughs> luck uh -huh. that preserved us in our silly season. Ooh. It wasn't coincidence that preserved us when we were behaving in ways that were crazy. It was, the, it was God knowing you're going to be mine. It's God in his providence saying you would choose me. So he chooses those uh -huh. that and choose him, him. Mm -hmm. and then releases provenient grace to protect you into in your silly season until you come to an awareness that you need him and you don't realize and recognize that you've been walking in grace before oh, you he, knew he, what he grace was. was. When you said that, Pastor, I thought about Jonah. It's, it's this grace that goes before, and it's sometimes the grace that finds us or the grace we run into trying to run from. I like that one, Doc. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. He was running from God and ran into but grace. ran into the grace that he didn't know was before him. I feel, <laughs> I feel like running or twirling or something. Yes, I don't know. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Trying to run from, from God, God and ran, ran in the grace. And I want to know: mm. Is there anybody in the chat tonight hey. <laughs> that's honest enough? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> to say I ran into it. I ran into it. Sometimes we were running from God or other times we were running after the wrong thing. Come on. And, and into ran into grace. Ran into grace. Grace got between. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> it got between mm. you and the wrong thing. Mm. This is why, at least at our church, Shane mm -hmm. Church, we are unapologetically mm. expressive. We're not silly. Yeah. Right? We don't get caught up in emotionalism. Right. But we are unapologetically expressive in our praise. Yes, Lord. Because we know the reason we've been preserved is because we ran into grace. Lord. Grace. Is that grace stepped in between mm -hmm. what should have happened and what could have happened mm -hmm. and say it, it won't happen. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it could have been another way. Past. I need Ooh. an organ yeah. right now yeah, been to one. hit me. <laughs> hey, just hit him. Somebody hit him. Just it could have been, you got an organ, and it should have been another way. But grace got between. So, so, so God, God, I, 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 I love this man. God 
is is not slack concerning these promises. Promise. That's our point. All right, mm-hmm. and these promises are ac- are, are accessed Access through faith. by faith. Better's a promise, mm-hmm. and the promises of God are accessed by faith. And I, I want to remind people of, and the reason I want to do this is because here's one of the things that you re- like. When you are called to spiritual leadership, I want everybody to hear me, right? Everyone you preach to, you don't pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, people that are part of Change Church, and whether it's our our physical locations or our global locations, Mm -hmm. they see me and I'm called to be their pastor, their Mm -hmm. watchman, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Other people, I am a spiritual voice. That's what we do with Thrive. We're we're, we're spirit. Paul says you don't have you have teachers, Mm -hmm. not many fathers. So when it comes to the spiritual family of Change Church, Mm -hmm. God's the heavenly Father, right? And then the pastor's the spiritual father of the family. Mm -hmm. And so that's and that that word father doesn't mean older. Mm -hmm. Like you can have a spiritual father that's your same age, right? Because that's not your natural daddy. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, you mm-hmm. got, that's not that's not his job. So you got a heavenly father. That's God. You got a natural father. Mm-hmm. That's your earthly dad. And then the spiritual one is simply the one and simply the role is not just to inspire you, but to raise you to maturity. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. just like a natural father is supposed to prepare the natural children in his house mm-hmm. to be responsibly God honoring functional adults. Mm-hmm. That is the pastoral role, mm. according to the New Testament, right? right? Okay, right. lead, feed, intercede, protect. All right. Mm. So the reason, because I know some people are like, hey, what you getting ready to talk about faith? I, I heard this already. You may have heard it if you're part of change. Mm-hmm. But you have to remember, God's given us a ministry, a teaching ministry, mm-hmm. that extends beyond the influence of our local church. Right. So there are people that tune in and tap in to say, I got a pastor already. Mm -hmm. I know who my pastor is. But Pastor Darius is a voice that God uses Mm -hmm. to help strengthen and supplement me spiritually. So that means there are some things people that change Mm -hmm. may have heard that people on Thrive haven't. Because the Thrive tribe Mm -hmm. is filled with spiritual sons and daughters and spiritual family and cousins. And cousins. And friends and family. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. So I, I want to say that I wanted to say that because mm-hmm. I want people to understand that. And that's why we that's why even you know, like Darius Daniels Ministries, that's mm-hmm. it is, hey, the teaching ministry, mm-hmm. God's given me to steward that is beyond the and more than the people he's called me to pastor. Yeah. 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 Good, pastor. yeah. I think it's a bit narcissistic for you to think you everybody pastor. <laughs> You're not everybody pastor. No, not. Some people, people, God gave somebody as yeah, a pastor, yeah, but, yeah. but 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 your voice. So so even if you know this definition, act like you don't, and you don't know it when you can quote it anyway. You know it when you use it. When you use it, here it is. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth all the time about everything. everything. Let it marinate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> faith yeah is acting like yes sir god is telling the truth yes all the time mm. about everything that's it man that's good yeah that's it yeah that's it yeah. the key thing is acting like acting like acting like and you know what when i when i first <clears throat> when i first you know encountered this definition it revolutionized my life mm. And I think anytime with faith, even though you think you know this definition, I think like everything, faith leaks. Faith That's leaks. strong. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah, faith leaks. It leaks. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. uh, anytime you, you get mm-hmm. a chance to build, because we talked about this earlier, how faith is a muscle, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that, 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 that response to situation based on how you've been exercising. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for many of us, it's like we may be we may be experiencing faith atrophy mm. because we hadn't used that muscle. Mm. We had been we had been working that muscle out, mm-hmm. and so it's like this acting like God is telling the truth about yeah. everything yeah. at all times. That's that's it. And it makes me think about Deuteronomy twenty eight, which mm-hmm. one of the Old Testament promises who said you to hear it and not to tell. Come on. But what happens, God Almighty, when you are experiencing that tell season? That's right. Did God lie about you being the heat? That's right. That's right. That's right. Faith helps you put that in the proper framework. That's right. Even though I may be in a tail season, faith said I'm still acting like I'm the heat. Come on here. 
That's it. Because me being in a tail season mm -hmm. is, a, is a fact. It's a fact. But me being the head is truth. <laughs> Come on here. Yes, Lord. Yes. It is truth. It is truth. Facts can change. Mm. Truth doesn't. Mm. See, the fact right now, I'm sitting down. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's a fact. If I stand up, it's no longer a fact. Mm. That fact changed. <laughs> that fact changed. Truth does not change. <laughs> so facts don't change truth, mm. but truth Jesus. will change, change facts. Man. And so faith is acting, acting like that. Yeah. So, so, so I think this is important, Pastor, because faith is different than just optimism mm -hmm. or belief. Mm -hmm. Faith is belief that manifests itself mm -hmm. in behavior. Yeah, behavior. Yeah. That's what distinguishes biblical faith mm -hmm. from optimism uh -huh. or just belief. Mm -hmm. James says this in James 2, 18, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. James says, show me your faith without deeds. Yeah. I will show you my faith by, by my, my deeds. deeds. Come on. He says, this is... Because there's just because we call it faith doesn't mean Meaning God calls it faith. faith. God responds to what He calls faith, faith. not we, <laughs> not what we call faith. That did you, it. Did you catch that? Now, say it again. God responds to what. So when He says with faith, mm -hmm. you can speak to a mountain, mountain, right, and tell it to be. Watch this, moved Move. and cast into the mm -hmm. sea. So faith not only moves mountains; it tells mountains where, where to go. go. But that's what God calls faith, not mm -hmm. what we call faith. Mm -hmm. So we can be exercising something that we call faith and God's like, we looking at the same thing, but we don't see the same thing. And we're using the same word, but we don't mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. He says, because what you call faith can be optimism. Mm -hmm. What you call faith can be wishing or hoping. Mm -hmm. He says, what I call faith is a conviction and a persuasion in my heart of a truth that compels me to engage in a corresponding action that the Bible calls works. Oh, that works are a corresponding the action. action. Come on here. Yeah. That 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 I believe. If you tell me you got something I need over your house, mm -hmm. the evidence that I believe it mm -hmm. is I get in the car mm -hmm. and I come get it. Mm -hmm. That's a corresponding action. action. That's what works is. It's a corresponding mm -hmm. action. action. And so the Bible even says, if all I do is believe, mm -hmm. that's not faith. Watch mm -hmm. this. Verse 19. You believe that there is one God. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Even the demons believe that. And so he said, you believe in the existence mm. of one God. Mm. He said, that's good, but that's not faith. That's not faith. That's not faith. He said, even demons know there's one God, but even demons have an action to what they believe. The mm. text says, and they shudder. And they shudder. And they shudder. So faith is, faith is acting like. And I, it's, it's like faith is putting legs on prayer. Gosh. That's it, it. It is putting legs. That's it, right. It, it makes a walk. Uh, yes. Hannah, you know, it's talked about how she prayed. Mm -hmm. We know what story Hannah was bearing. It said after she prayed, but before God did what she asked for, she got up and act like it was already done. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. She got up and like it was already done. Yeah. When she went to her house, God. Come on. Did what she prayed for. A hundred percent. Because she reflected what she expected. Yeah. You can't, you're not going, you're not going to just slip that on us, doc. Yeah, you got to reflect. Not gonna what say you, <laughs> you got to reflect. If you, if you, if you say God is here, your body don't wait. Just act like, it. you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And that's yes, what faith sir. is. It is reflecting what we expecting by not only our yeah. behavior, yeah, but also, and we talked about this last, last right, about our mouth. Yeah, that's what right. What comes out of our mouth? That profession. That profession. Yeah, the profession 100%. of faith. So faith is acting like, right. this is key guys, because this is, this is all foundational to where we're going with this principle, this last principle we're going to talk about. So faith is acting like God mm -hmm. is telling the truth. Th there's a scripture in Mark eleven twenty two 22, where Jesus says these words, have faith in God. Mm -hmm. This is another area mm -hmm. where I think the scriptures distinguish yeah. God's perspective mm -hmm. on faith, sometimes for, from from our perspective mm. on faith. Mm. So sometimes people, it is possible, watch this, to have faith in faith. <laughs> I'm so, I'm right, so, so, so what do you mean? So here's the difference. Let's say someone says it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. They can have faith in faith that just because they believe oh, it's yeah. going to work out, that some universal... Mm theoretical 
law is just going to work it out. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we would say yeah. as followers of Jesus would be God is going to work, work it, it out. out. Like I'm not, I'm not at the mercy mm -hmm. of stuff just aligning in the universe. Mm -mm. I am, come on, mm -hmm. at the mercy of the God that created the universe. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and he is able to work all things together for my good. So mm -hmm. faith has a author mm -hmm. and a finisher. Yes. It comes from somebody and it is placed in, in somebody. somebody. Mm -hmm. It is not just, I believe it's going to work out because everything always, always works out. No, it does not. Mm -hmm. Paul says, God will work. Yeah. Yeah. All things That's together. Our, for our good. Yeah. For our good. And he, yeah. So my he faith knows. is not in faith. <laughs> That's good. My faith That's good. is not in some universal whatever. Mm -hmm. My faith is in, God. is in God. It's in God. It's acting like God is telling the truth, the truth all the time about everything. Pastor, I want to. I want. I want. I want to. I want to hear what you think about this. This is something I learned in, in seminary. This was, mm -hmm. a, I think, was a book we were reading in seminary uh, on Martin Luther, mm -hmm. and um, not Martin Luther King, Martin <laughs> but Martin Luther, Luther. Protestant reformer. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the reformer. He says that the this this it was real interesting. He said that the strength of your faith mm -hmm. is tied to your revelation of the credibility of God's character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? My God. That it really comes down to the strength of your faith is going to be based on whether or not in your mind God's credible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is he credible? Is he credible? Is he credible? That's ultimately what it comes down to, which is why it would make sense now that the writer of Hebrews says, without faith, it is impossible, it's impossible to please it. Them six, impossible because to Luther them. says... Not to believe him is to insult his credibility. Sir? It is to oh say to him, <laughs> it is to say to him, you can't do mm. what you say you will do. Or you won't do, do. Right. what you said you would do. But ultimately, faith comes down to, to credibility. Credibility. God's credibility in your mind. He's credible. Mm. But your faith is going to be impacted by your revelation of his credibility. Of his and you know, Pastor, I use this, this analogy a lot. Like, every, every space I'm in where they're seating, I never see people inspect the chairs, the legs, before they sit down. Don't mess with it. Yes, sir. They never, I never see you an don't. inspection of the legs. I see people you sit down. That's right. And the reason they sit down without inspection, even mm -hmm. if the chair is faulty, Mm -hmm. Because they never sat in a chair and it fell with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most and of I, the time. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I can't wonder like how we put more faith in a chair than we put in God. Mm -hmm. When God has never failed us, mm -hmm. God has never dropped us, mm -hmm. God has never done That's anything powerful. contrary to That's his powerful. word. That's you powerful. know, the, we, we, we say this saying, he may not come when you want him to come, mm -hmm. but he's an on time God. Yeah. Always. And so, and so I think when it comes to this question of faith, it's not a matter if or if we have faith or not, but it's a matter of where or who do we have our faith in. Right, because your analogy is so important, which was we'll probably go back to Mark eleven twenty two, which is why Jesus said, have faith in God, because you have faith. Yeah, it's it, just faith in a chair. Yeah, It's faith in, watch this, faith mm -hmm. in a doctor's expertise mm -hmm. who writes a prescription that you can't read. You can't read. <laughs> Very often, you can't read, you can't, you can't read. pronounce. You take it to a pharmacist, you don't know. Right. Who gives you pills that you <laughs> and you don't know if the pills are actually what they say so, they are. Right. And then we take them mm. with the expectation that the pills are gonna address the issue. It's faith. We have faith. Yeah. <laughs> that you won't talk about faith. faith. That's faith. That, that, that's, that's, that's faith. That's radical faith. That's radical <laughs> faith right there. And Jesus is saying, you, you have it in a doctor, you have it in a pharmacist, you have it in a chair. Have it in God, but it is tied to, to your view yeah, of, God, yes. of God's ability Man. and God's willingness to do what he said. He's, he's, he's credible. 
which is why Hebrews 6.18 says, God did this so that by two unchangeable things, in which is it impossible for God to lie. Uh -huh. It is impossible for God to, to lie. lie. It is impossible, impossible. for God to, to lie. lie. Mm. And so this is important because we wanted to, uh, I think, unpacking mm -hmm. this definition of faith, which is, which is an iteration of a definition I saw uh, from Dr. Tony Evans years mm -hmm. ago. Um, so I dipped it in Daniels yeah. and added some pieces the to dip, it. The, the dip. <laughs> but this leads to this last principle we want to cover for mm -hmm. progress mm -hmm. in Hebrews 10, because I, I think when people, when we think about faith, I think for me, I always want my faith to be strong. And mm -hmm. I think most people are in pursuit of strong faith. Mm -hmm. Here's a revelation I got a while ago, and this is going to lead to this third principle. Pastor, strong faith is actually long faith. Mm. Mm. Come on here. Strong faith is actually strong faith. Mm -hmm. Because when Jesus talks about faith, mm -hmm. he talks about quality, mm -hmm. not quantity, right? right? He right. Talks, talks about the strength of it, right. not the size of it. Right, right. He said, because you only need mustard seed. seed. Yep. And he says, if you got mustard That's seed faith, you can move mountains. You can move it. I think sometimes we think we need mountain-sized faith to move yeah, mountains. No, and Jesus said, you need mustard seed faith. faith. So sometimes it's not, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so when I say the strength of it, mm -hmm. the strength of it is the length of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is this is the third principle to progress. It is the principle of perseverance. My God. In Hebrews 10, 36, you, this is what it says. You need to persevere <laughs> so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what, what he has yes. promised. My God. He, he promised it, Pastor. Promised. He promised it. But I do not access what he's promised without My perseverance. Mm. What is perseverance? Long, long faith. faith. <laughs> it's long faith. Come on here. Yeah. Strong faith is long faith. faith. Yeah. And you know, I, I love, you know, I always have to look up the definition. The definition of perseverance, it is steady persistence in a course of action, especially in the face of difficulty. Uh, steady persistence. In a course of action. In a course of action. Especially in the face, face of difficult when it's hard. Come on. It's that Come long. On. Can I keep doing it? Yes. When it gets hard. Yeah. Can I keep doing it when I feel like giving yeah. up? Yeah. Come on. See, and here's something you said that was so important, we, and we can't skip over this. You said faith leaks. Mm. Right? So, watch this. My God. And sometimes the longer the length, the more the leak. Yes. 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 Right? You, you know? yes. So we start off on the faith journey. We believe it. Mm. But the more time it takes, the more faith in that starts leaking, Whew. which is why we need a replenishment discipline in our life or a rhythm for replenishment when it comes to our faith. My God. Faith is going to leak. Mm. So the question isn't, how do I stop it from leaking? Mm. The question is, how do I keep replenishing it? Mm. Yeah, God, I love it. Pastor. Because sometimes the length of it increases the leaks. The longer I got to wait, the more my faith leaks. And, man, and, and just using this, this whole leak analogy, I just thought about how sometimes the enemy likes to poke holes in our faith. All, not sometimes, all the time. Doubt is a hole. <laughs> Doubt is a hole. Yeah. Delays are holes Good. that the enemy mm. tries to poke in our faith, mm -hmm. if we're using this analogy. And so, yeah. and so sometimes we got to be willing to not identify the holes that the enemy is trying to use to make our faith leak. Mm. But just like you said, we got to plug and replenish mm -hmm. when the enemy attacks. Mm. We got to replenish, but we also have to, you know, plug those faith holes. Yeah. You said doubt is a doubt hole. And delay. So faith will leak yep. with, with doubt. So the delay. enemy the enemy will plant doubt mm -hmm. to poke a hole in our faith mm -hmm. to make it leak. Delay. Delay. Is another one. Now, when you said that one, I thought about this one. Disappointment. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Disappointment. My God. Hole, and our faith right. can leak out of that. Right. So this principle of perseverance is important. Because it's a principle, you guys, not a feeling. Yeah. What was the definition again? A it steady? Is, it is a, a steady persistence in a course of action, especially in the face of difficulty. That's what it is. It didn't say a feeling. I didn't see one feeling no, word it, in there. It, it did not. It did so not. So perseverance 
has nothing to do with how I feel. Course of action. It's, it's a course action. Of action. It's a course of action. It's action. My God. And this print. And so the, the, the text says, Hebrews 10.36, I love this. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, New King James says, after you have done, done the will, the will of, God. of God. So it means that there is, that sometimes that there is a weight mm. that I have to endure after I've done the will. Mm -hmm. See, doing the will doesn't always eliminate the, the weight. weight. But the text says, after I've done the will, now I got to endure the weight. weight. And my faith is tested during the weight. Come it's here. Doing the weight. God does not test faith by the, by the enormity of the obstacle only. Mm. I'm not saying he doesn't test faith that way. Come he on. does. Mm. But God also tests faith mm. by the length of the weight. <laughs> so he's not always testing faith by trying to see, trying to get us to see how big we can believe. Mm. Sometimes he's testing faith by trying to get us to see how long we can believe. Oh see, Abraham's... I, I, I ain't gonna, come on, come on, we got, we got, we got, we got, because one of my points I want to <laughs> is like how faith is measured in movement. Yes. And how with this whole Abram, God told him to get out, get from his country, his uh, family mm -hmm. place of familiarity. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and Abram it. left mm -hmm. on faith. Mm -hmm. He said, go to a land that I will show you. Yeah. So he started stepping really before God started speaking mm -hmm. and showing him what he was getting ready to step That's into. Right. That's right. But it was this whole believing God enough, the mm -hmm. credibility of God mm -hmm. to, to start moving without, mm -hmm. all the without all the detail. But that's faith, though, because he had enough. Watch this. Come on. I love God you. gives you love information on a need to know, know basis. Baby. Not a want to know basis. <laughs> Abraham had enough information to mm. take the next step. step. Mm -hmm. He didn't know everything. Mm. He knew enough to leave. Mm. And so if God hadn't given a new word, your responsibility is to keep walking in the old one. Mm. And that's what he did. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what happens, though. Mm -hmm. God promised them. Mm -hmm. He said, now, yep. <laughs> I need you to leave. Uh -huh. I'm going to make you into a great nation. That's what he said. But he's married, mm -hmm. come on, come on. Yep. to a woman, mm -hmm. Sarah, mm -hmm. who can't give him a child. So he's got a promise that God made in chapter 12 of Genesis. Uh -huh. And we have to go through a majority of the book of Genesis mm -hmm. before we see the fulfillment, or a large part of the book of Genesis, before we see the fulfillment of that promise. Mm -hmm. So he had the promise. And he did the will of God. He mm -hmm. obeyed. He left. But he had to wait. He still had to wait. Because remember now when he got the word mm -hmm. that he was going to have a baby, him and Sarah laughed. And, they left, yeah. and so God said, I'm going to make you wait longer. Now, what did they do? They engaged in impatient activity during the wait. Mm -hmm. And that's, <laughs> that's where Hagar came. Impatient activity. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, yeah, that, Goodbye, that's, God. yeah. And so, so that's when Hagar comes into play. But the point that I'm making is without perseverance, they don't possess the promise. They don't. Because Isaac often requires a wait. Mm. I, I want you to catch it. It often requires a wait. And Isaac, though, is only born mm. when you are mature enough, old enough, mature enough spiritually. Y'all not talking to me tonight? Mm -hmm. Mature enough spiritually mm -hmm. to properly appreciate them and appropriately raise them. Because mm -hmm. some promises God gives to you in infant form and you have to raise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what do you mean, Pastor? You got to nurture it. Yeah. Some stuff God's going to give you in infant form. Mm -hmm. See, it's almost like people who say, I'm believing God for my Ruth or my Boaz. Mm -hmm. What they want is somebody... <laughs> I, I'm not even about, yeah. right? <laughs> they, they, they don't want nobody they got to work with. They, 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 they just uh, yeah, I, and we're not saying <laughs> do someone biblical or lawyer standards. That is what we say. Yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. But at the same time, you got to water the garden. Yeah, you got to nurture it. Gotta. Yeah, it, you got to you got to raise it. <laughs> and yeah, I love it. 
And I think one of the things that, man, like I can see it in my life, Pastor, I can see it in my in our leadership, in my leadership. I think about what I would have missed if I stopped. Mm -hmm. My God. Yeah. I think about what I would have missed my God. Yeah. if I had stopped because it had been so long. Mm -hmm. Like the lack of my belief because certain things took so long, revealed I had more faith in time than God. That, that's the issue. Like, Man, yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? I make like, sense. Yeah, if yeah, I stop believing because it's taking long, God's using that to show me, hey, your faith is not where you think it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm using this to some. Does that make sense? Something uh, that yeah, God yeah. uses the weight to reveal that to us that our faith isn't where we think it is right. and what we think it is, not to condemn us. It's weird how people mm -hmm. think. Here's one of the things that is real interesting. I was thinking about this this morning, how Jesus regularly showed grace mm -hmm. to those who had doubt. <laughs> yeah. I want, show me him condemning a doubter. Mm -hmm. How gracious did he deal with Thomas? Mm -hmm. He showed, he could have been like, Thomas, I'm not showing you anything. Yeah. Because Thomas said, lest I see, lest I see put my the holes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's what Thomas said. Yeah. Jesus could have been like, I'm not showing you anything. He showed him. Because he even has grace for doubt. Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. He had grace mm. for doubt. And so I feel like sometimes we can't fix our faith because we won't let God show so us that our faith isn't where it is or where we think it is or what it needs to be because we feel like if it's not there, we're being condemned by him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm not showing you what's wrong to show you what's wrong. I'm showing you what's wrong because I'm showing you grace. what I want to fix. Grace. And... um for some of us, I'm done, let's wrap up here. Uh, for some of us, pastor, what God's trying to fix is our perseverance. Mm -hmm. There are people right now in this moment, you've quit on something God's not done with. Mm -hmm. And because it hasn't been done yet, you think it's not going to be done. Mm -hmm. And I think God is in this moment, through this teaching, maybe challenging some of us. Hey, go back and look at Abraham's story now. Because he was thinking probably what you are thinking, and that is you're too old. Too much time has passed. He says, and it's almost like we need to realize God put that story in the Bible so that we could see, hey, he can empower us to give birth to things in a season of life where other people think it's too late. Where we think it's too late. It's perseverance. And um, perseverance has a perfecting work. It does. James 1, 4 says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. So it's like patience doesn't just work for us, it works on us. Like God kills several birds with one stone. So we think we're waiting, God's making us wait just to get something. And God's using the wait to make us become something. I love it. I love that. <laughs> Right. And and the better the better we become personally, the better life we have practically. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people miss, that your quality of life is tied to the evolution of you. Man. Ah, did you catch that? Like life, life just really gets better when you do. No way around. Uh, but it takes perseverance. It perseverance produces the evolution of character. It produces the, um, the acquisition of God's promises. Yeah. Hebrews 6.12, we do not want you to become lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what is promised. Imitate those who through faith 
and patience. Yeah. Faith and patience. Inherit what's promised. It's the it produces the evolution of a character. There's a person you become. How God uses the weight mm -hmm. um, to make us into the kind of person that can handle the promises. When I look at some of the responsibility I have to steward now, I'm so glad God didn't give it to me when I thought I was ready for it. It would have been bad stewardship. Evolution of our character. Acquisition of God's promises. And then passes one other thing. When perseverance is worked in us, it not only produces evolution of character, acquisition of God's promises, it also produces answers to prayers. When Jesus tells that story about how this, uh, a parable, mm -hmm. and this person goes to a person's house at, at, at midnight, midnight, knocking on the door saying, I want some bread. Yeah. And the person's like, man, we sleep. We sleep. Leave us alone. <laughs> and said, when that person keep knocking, uh -huh. the person in the house gets up. And then Jesus said, hey, you need to ask and it'll give and be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock in the, door. in the door. Like perseverance even shows up in, in your prayer life. So this is a principle for progress. Yeah. Pastor, I think one, one way we, we can look at um, this whole perseverance is as weight training, W-A-I-T training. And I think sometimes God has us waiting in order to train us. Mm. And one of the things I heard that was kind of, I heard in the spirit was like, God has you in training. And some of us ended our training too soon. Oh. Mm. Mm. Because perseverance mm. is sometimes having enough faith mm -hmm. to stay when it gets hard. That's right. When everything else in you is telling you to quit. And mm -hmm. this is what I love about, even when God has us in weight training, mm. God is in the weight with us. That's right. I heard an illustration made it was so powerful. It was just like this baby in the crib mm. crying. And the mother told the father not to take the baby out the crib. Every time he would reach in there to get the baby, don't you get him out, mm. I told you, don't you get him out. And around the third time, the father looked at the baby crying and he looked at the mother and he said, she told me, I couldn't get you out, but mm. she didn't tell me I couldn't get in there with you. Mm. Mm. And sometimes mm. that's what God has us mm -hmm. in the way. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get us out. Can't get you out. You need to. You need to. You need to stay in you there. Need to stay in there. But what I'm gonna do I'm is gonna I'm gonna get in, get in, there, in there with you. Comfort you. And so don't get out of yeah. what God got in with you. That's right. That's right. That's it. That's it. He got in the crib. We got out. We got yeah. out. Yeah. So, man, we're, we're going to pray over that. We're going to pray over that because here's what we realize. We realize uh, that all teaching of God's words should flow from prayer, mm -hmm. that there should be prayerful preparation in yeah. terms of what needs to be taught. Oh, my God. And um, because God knows how to prompt us to teach timeless truths in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. He knows what people need to hear exactly when they need to hear. So good. Teaching should come from prayer, but it shall it should also lead right back to prayer because people can't put into practice the principles that have been taught without God. There is nothing we have taught you tonight that you can do without God. Mm, so this is why we always conclude our time together yeah. with prayer. So we're going to pray over you. Thank you for being with us. They're putting lower thirds on the on the screen today. This is. Every principle, the working mm -hmm. of every principle mm -hmm. requires perseverance. Mm -hmm. Here's what Genesis says. As long as the earth remains, yeah. it's talking about agriculturally yeah. now. Yeah. But we can take this agricultural yeah. analogy because it's we see a theme throughout scripture where agricultural analogies mm -hmm. are apply mm -hmm. and apply to our resources. As long as the earth remains, there's seed, and harvest. time, mm -hmm. and then harvest. I've worked in the garden before. <laughs> Me too. The season of planting uh -huh. isn't always the season of reaping. You don't mm -hmm. plant today and reap tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There's seed that has to be planted. Planting. Then there's time you have to wait. Yeah. And then there's harvest. Yeah. And I believe when it comes to generosity, mm -hmm. the same principle applies. Mm -hmm. We've got to be willing to work the principle of perseverance mm -hmm. and plant seed. seed. 
and believe over time, God's going to give a harvest. And here is, I was thinking about this this morning. I want, I want at least our Thrive Tribe and our spiritual family to be more cognizant of this. Harvest can be this. Ideas, mm -hmm. opportunities, exposure, mm. or income. Mm. God can give you ideas. Mm. That's creative abundance. Yes. He can give you opportunities that other people don't get. Right. He can give you exposure to information mm. or to people mm -hmm. that other people don't get exposure to. Or he can send someone that's willing to give you more for the same thing you're already doing, income. Mm. <laughs> Harvest. Harvest. We believe that. We believe. we believe everything God's word says about everything. Yeah. And um, so Lord, there's on the screen for you guys to, to give and to sow into uh, into your future. Yeah. We believe, we believe, uh, as Dr. James McDonald says, when it comes to resources, view it vertically. Mm -hmm. View it vertically, mm -hmm. right? It, um, it belongs to God. So I need to view it vertically. I need to earn it honestly. Mm -hmm. I need to steward it wisely. wisely. I need to give it generously. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe in that. We're going to experience God's best, man. I'm excited. I'm excited about this. Mm -hmm. Hey, real quick, I want to invite Pastor... Uh, I only pro I only have probably about 150 slots. I'm doing something called a transformation lab mm. on April the 27th. Seven. It's during our awakening. Well, actually, April 20th in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. And then April 27th, 7th in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It's only about 150 spots at each location. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if I got that many spots at Jersey, honestly. So I don't want to misspeak. But it's not a man's summit. It's not a man's conference because we're going deep, not wide. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose, to keep it intimate so it could, so it could be radically transformative. So I'm doing what's called a transformation lab. It means I'm spending extended extended period of time leaning into a specific subject in hopes that men will experience a quantum leap in that area. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to go wide with this. We'll do something wide later. Mm -hmm. We're massive. I'm trying to go deep. And so on April 20th and 27th, they're putting the information on the screen. You can register for this. I'm doing a transformation that I call Arresting Ahab. Uh, I love it. Right? Yeah. Because passivity in the wrong areas is killing your purpose. Mm. So I'm talking about this Old Testament figure named Ahab. Yeah. See, because the issue is, man, we aggressive in the wrong areas. <laughs> Y'all aren't talking to me. We are aggressive in the wrong ones, passive in the right ones. Yeah. This shift you just made with your health, mm -hmm. what did you just, you just basically said, I'm going to get aggressive in the right area. I, gotta get aggressive in the I can't be passive with my health. No. No. And so every man has some Ahab in him somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I want to spend three hours with men on the 20th and on the 27th, and we're going to expose where Ahab is, and we're going to arrest yeah. Ahab. And so I, I want you to make sure you tap into that. It's, it's going to be. Pastor, can the uh, wives sign their men up for this? <laughs> no. They get, you got that. Because hey, someone's going to tell them you sign them up. Sign, just no. let them know you signed them up. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I need, yeah. I don't even. This is different kind yeah, of energy. They're, 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 they're upset. Like, why oh. you tell me? I need, you think I'm Ahab? <laughs> yeah. But that's true, isn't it true? We could be passive in parenting. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Passive as husbands. Aggressive about the wrong, you know what I mean? Aggressive about the wrong thing. Aggressive about trying about trying to get what we want from a woman, but not aggressive or assertive about giving her what she needs or what the Bible says belongs to her. And Pastor, this in this season, Lord help, we talk about uh, we got to go. But I tell you, man, this season, this is what this season represents for me. It's like God, like you're not doing bad, but you're not doing your best. Mm -hmm. There's always your, 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 your best can always get better. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm in a season of like leaning yeah. in to like, father. I'm leaning in. Y'all, I'm thriving. I'm leaning in in every area as a husband, as a father, as, 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 a, as a pastor, man. I'm just leaning in. Let's go. Let's go. I'm so, man, in. let's pray. Let's pray for, let's pray over um, God's people tonight. And, uh, man, we look forward to you participating in all that. All that God's doing. I also started this series called Red Flags. Red Flags. So if you haven't seen that, you gotta go.
you gotta check that out. It's a <laughs> biblical exegetical journey. Exegesis means drawing out. That's what it means. So understanding what the scriptures are saying and then drawing out meaning for our everyday life on so it's a it's it's a uh exegetical journey on the biblical idea mm -hmm. of discernment. Yeah. And what a lot of people call in discernment is cynicism that comes from your scars. Mm. <laughs> that's not discernment. Nah, that's cynicism that's come sure. from your scars. Uh, that's paranoia yeah. that came from your pain. <laughs> so you looking for everything that's wrong. That's not discernment. Nah, that's not. Discernment is, it comes from you being prompted by the spirit. It comes from insight that you have from the scriptures. Anyway, if you hadn't tapped into that, we want you to tap, tap into in. that also, tap man. In. Just, just incredible. So Father, thank you for thank today. You, God. And uh, we pray for those that are dealing with weariness yeah, and fatigue. You, yes, Lord. Um, those that need to persevere. Mm. Those who've gone through battles and those battles have poked holes in the container of their faith. Their, mm. their faith is leaking. Mm. God, would you fill them until their cup runs yes, over? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We believe. We believe. But help our unbelief. Yes, God. Give us strength to run on to see what the end will be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. See you next love week. Love you guys. Well, listen, thank you for watching Thrive. I want you to make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of our teachings. And remember, you can watch me live at Thrive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care. I'll see you soon.